I'm very appreciative of you allowing me to be on your platform. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, and I, I, I can't wait for us to bond and continue this ongoing. Sure. So, you know, well, I'm, I'm, I'm here for you, man. I love it. I love it. So let's get into it. I want to begin our journey into your life as an artist and, and everything that that is who you are by asking you. I know we're getting tired of talking about COVID, but at the end of the day, how did you survive that time period and how has it changed the way that you do things now? OK, well. It's, 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 it's multifaceted, OK, okay. because the COVID scenario was what started me to release my record. So from. I'm 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 51 right now. I started chasing this dream when I was 19, right? Yeah. So from 19 to about I say 47, 48, I was I got to get a record deal. I got to sign with a company. I'm gonna go meet whoever, whoever. And then I woke up one day was like, you know what? I ain't got nothing to show for it. Let me get into the job world. So I started um, I started working in the warehouse, fell in love with it. I was a, a loader, unloading and loading. Then I taught myself how to drive a forklift. Then I, I said, you know what? Why don't I drive a truck? So I went and got my trucking license. So I learned every aspect of the warehouse. And then I started working for this company that was an aerospace company. And I, 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 I'm, I'm the, the guy that I worked for, they had every tool you could think of. So I started learning different things about maintenance. So I was able to walk away from entertainment and find a new calling in life. And then COVID hit. Boom. Now, when COVID hit, you know, you can't go back outside. You can't do anything. And I had a record that was um, that was shelved for like a couple of years. So I went on CD Baby, CD Baby and I released a single. And when I released that single on CD, baby, I started noticing it came up on Instagram, in the stories, Facebook, in the stories. People was able to comment and be like, wow. And I saw, you know, the steps that I took to release my first single. And I was like, man, I'm chasing after a record deal, but I'm everywhere that I would want to be had I not had a, a, a record company and did it on my own. So. I was like, you know what? I'm going to stick to this. And I did a video. And then I ended up over the period of the COVID era from 19, 2019 through 2020, I released eight singles and did like four videos all through CD, baby, learning the, um, the steps, copywriting it, creating my website, hit, dealing with the PROs, um, structuring it, learning a little bit about marketing, paying for this social media marketing company, this social media marketing company. And that's how I transitioned. So COVID gave me the, um, the introduced me to releasing the record. And once I started doing it with CD Baby, I was like, I got my own record company. I incorporated it and I just kept working. And now I'm about to release an album in December that's produced by my son. So it, I know I'm running off into something, but you're good. But um it's 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 um it's very sentimental to me because I, I'm I'm actually a full-fledged independent record company with distribution. I got the internet as my vehicle, and now my sons, who is um 16 and 18, are the producers on the record. So that was that was like a major accomplishment for me. What a dream come true, man. So yes, let's... sir. So of all of the things that are you right now, if I put you in front of a bunch of third graders at career day and one of the kids was curious and said, hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer them? I would tell them um, I'm a dad. I'm a full time dad. That's my job. That's my career job. Yeah. But I got a side job as an independent recording artist. And it just so happened that I turned it into a family business because my sons are involved. But my full time day to day job. I'm a I'm a dad. I'm a I'm I'm just dad. Not super dad, not the best dad. I'm just D A D dad. I get it. I totally get it. When you were in the third grade, what did you want to be when you grew up? Was it always music? Um no, when I was actually I wanted to be a sheriff, man. I wanted okay. to be a, I wanted to be a sheriff. So, when I got to the 12th grade in high school, I went to the Marines 
you know, and then my father got murdered. And once my father got murdered and um, I didn't get no closure on what happened, I was depressed. So I always was a rapper in school from elementary, junior high, high school. I was always rapping. You know, I wasn't taking it professional. And then when my dad died, I had two people that I knew that made it, you know, professionally. And I knew I had the skills, so I started writing songs to get over my dad. So the things that I wish I could have discussed with my dad or could have experienced with my dad was what I utilized as my um, foundation for writing my songs. So that's how I walked off into doing entertainment professionally. So who's been a hero for you? Who's been an inspiration for you, especially in this pursuit to get your album produced and distributed? Well, as far as a hero, I won't say a hero, but I'll say somebody that really intrigued me was a music executive by the name of Walter Yetnikoff. Yeah. I um I learned about him. He uh, was at CBS Records. You know, he was behind the Michael Jackson Thriller album. And an attorney taught me the business about publishing, and he turned me on to the book, The Hitman. And I read that book like maybe 10 times. But I was just fascinated to see how Walter Yetnikoff not only was an executive at the label, but he kind of bonded with all of his artists and gave them freedom to create and express themselves as artists. So with me learning the business, right, and understanding what my job description was, I, I, I kept that energy on how to create my records with my own identity and I cultivated that whenever I met another producer, another artist, another executive, where I took from what I was watching and learning from reading Walter Yednikov, that was my that was my line right there. I knew I could stand firm on what I believed in. I could maintain my confidence because I knew I had the talent. And from reading all them books and learning what my job description was, that was like a gift and a curse for me. But that was my... That was what motivated me, watching that it could be done that way and standing up to the government with the payola. So Walter Yednikoff was an executive that I really, really admired that I kind of like took a liking to to move in the way that I did as being an artist. So as an artist and a music lover, what was the first concert you ever went to that blew you away that made you think, I want to be up there one day? Um, the very first concert I went to was um knew it did no boys to men it was like a it was ironically the weekend that i came home to bury my father wow i came home from the marines and my friends took me to this concert it was boys to men tlc and i think bbd was at the concert and i watched the concert and when i saw it i was just like man that's that's awesome look at the crowd look at everything but i was still emotionally thrown off because i just lost my dad 45 minutes he died 45 minutes after i hung up the phone from him and i haven't seen him in six years so it was kind of like i was still emotional but just watching that environment watching the people watching everything that took off there it kind of it kind of intrigued me about being in that limelight so I th I think the beauty of what you've done is there's a lot of people that have these dreams they never go after. Like Mark Twain was famously quoted as saying he doesn't regret what he did with his life. He regrets what he didn't do. And yeah. you've had this dream and you never let it go. And it took a long time. What was that perseverance? What was that dream that never ended for you that eventually made you not only make this, but to do it with your sons, that's a big deal. What was the gumption that made you get to this point? Okay, the, the first start of it was I could do it. That was the first thing. I, I was confident. I am a great rapper. I know how to write raps and perform them. So I knew I could do it. I was confident in that. The second thing was I knew the business. So I knew that I could do the rapping part, but I also knew how to protect myself so I knew what I was deserving. And then the the fighting force was when I became a dad chasing my dream and I was depriving my kids of a lot of my time 
because my priority my priority was accomplishing this goal that I set for myself in life. Every day I kept telling myself, if I don't make it, what I got to show for all this time that I robbed my kids of. And I kept going based off of that. Kept going, kept going, kept going. So by the time I got to my 40s, you know, it was like, all right, you, 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 you did make it. You deprived them of their time. So what are you going to do to repair the time with your kids? So I started going to the schools and, and trying to repair that time with my kids. So, so uh, one of my coworkers. So I tried to, I started trying to um, repair that relationship with my kids. And when they um, came to the house one day, they played a song for me that they made on GarageBand. And I was like, they made the beat, they wrote the rap, and it was real catchy. I was like, wow, you, you guys is kind of good. And plus my sisters and everybody was telling me I need to give my kids a shot. So I was, I was, I didn't want them to go through what I went through. So, you know, I kind of like, didn't want to involve it, right? And then um, I came, I got a son that lives in Arizona. So I was living in Atlanta. So when I, I come home, I got a, I had a place in LA and a place in Atlanta. So when I would come home to pick up my son from Arizona, because it's my, my summers, because I get them during the summers, my boys, 14 and 16, was like, Dad, we're not going back to our moms. We moving in. So I'm like, damn, I got to change my life up. So I went and bought uh, um, I went and bought all the equipment to uh, I went and bought all the equipment. Hold on real quick, sir. You bet. You bet. Oh, give me one second. One second. One second. I went and bought all the equipment to for them to learn. I bought them a MacBook, uh, 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 Apple computer so that they could learn how to create the music. Yeah. So they started getting good at it. They was getting better and better. And so a producer and an engineer that I worked with, I flew down to uh, Oregon to talk to CD Baby. I went to Portland, come to find out they was working remotely. So I went to the office, saw the office, but they was working remotely. So me and the engineer, we did a song. I rented an Airbnb. We created the song, shot a video, then I released it and showed them the process of doing it. So after I did that, what I told them is I said, you know what? You guys want to get involved in music? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take your beats. I'm going to create an album. And me creating this album, I'm going to teach you how to put out the records. So here we go, the process. So this whole album that I created is me teaching my sons the process of releasing the album. From ownership to creating it, to developing it, to marketing it, to every step that comes with creating a record. So if you could meet one artist alive on the planet right now, a musician, artist, who would it be? Who would you love to meet, talk to, ask questions, see how they roll? Um, living in and deceased? Yeah, Probably. it could be both. It could be ghosts and current. All right. If I go with a ghost, if I go with a ghost, it would be easy E. Yeah. It would be easy E, definitely easy E as a ghost because yeah. – Easy was an executive and he he kept his own situation together. Yeah. And it was like just to see how and then he was the first one to do it his way as far as he didn't go traditional. He wasn't making the kind of records everybody else was making. He did what he wanted to do. So to see how he had to um, have those board meetings and deal with those shareholders and everybody and still get to be easy at the same time. And develop other artists, I would love to hear how he would have um, went through that process. And then if you go with somebody current right now, I would I would love to meet E-40 because E-40 has been relevant, period. Like for him to come in and, and do what he's done as an artist, because you asked me about artists. So to see what he's done all this time as an artist, as, an, as a record company owner, um, staying relevant with the times and then transitioning over into um, with the beverages, with the alcohol business. I would just really like to sit up and just ask him a couple questions and bounce different ideas and formulas off of each other just to see where he's at and see if he'll be intrigued to see where my knowledge is of this business. 
So let's say you have a dream tonight. You run into the 18-year-old version of you. You can give that young version of you a piece of advice based on this life you've led, the wisdom you've gained. What advice would you give your younger self? I would have told myself, um, you should have got a job. You should have, you should have, you should have um, took a career where you would have been able to do both. So when you got up into your 40s like I am now, I would have some kind of um, something to fall back on, some Social Security, some health benefits. Um, I would have had something. I would have, I would have been able to create it another positive revenue stream that I could pull from to create what I was trying to create. And that's, that's probably what I would have told myself, you know, my 18 year old self. Yeah. So of everything that you've done and evolved into and overcome in your life, what are you the proudest of? That I'm, that I'm still myself, that I didn't never lose chemo in the process of it all. I'm still, the, I'm still, I'm still can wake up every morning with a positive mindset. I don't have no regrets. I have, have some disappointments, but no regrets. And um, I'm proud of the way that I did it. You know, I don't have to look back and be like, I shouldn't have did this. I shouldn't have did that. Because all of those um, learning lessons that I had was helped me become the man that I am today. So I'm very proud of myself that I was confident and disciplined enough to maintain my integrity and respect for the business and for myself. So at the end of the day, everyone has a perception of you, family, friends, everyone that's consuming your music that you work with. But ultimately, you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? I think I'm determined and I'm I'm a, um, I'm a dreamer. I've never stopped being a dreamer and I'm determined, though. I, I think of myself as a savvy, um, confident businessman, but I'm very determined. And I got a personal saying, I never had the heart to be a gangster, but I always had the balls to be a businessman. Yeah. So I might not be able to go do what gangsters do to achieve their accomplishments, but I got the balls to do business with anybody and stay firm on my position and confident in what I'm going to do to achieve it. You know, my dad was full-blooded Italian from, from he was born in Brooklyn, raised in Long Island. And he okay. used to always tell me about the mafia. He was like, Whatever you do, don't piss in the river because one day you may have to drink out of it. Whoa, that's a good one right there. <laughs> that's a good one right so there. So it's like, do it the right way, man. Do it with exactly. honesty and integrity and you'll be okay. Exactly. So if anyone wants to get your music, they want to reach out, anything about your world, where's the best place to go? Uh, Kimeo.com, K-I-M-E-Y-O.com. And that'll lead you everywhere. You can just, matter of fact, you just put my name in Google and everything is going to come up. All the hard work, all the hard work, almost, almost, all the hard work. I'm at the body shop because I'm the maintenance. I dig it. We're night. almost done. <laughs> but um, all the hard work, all the hard work and everything that um, everything is there. Everything is on my website. Everything is on my domain name. So I'll put it in the show notes. Good on you, man. Good, for, good no work. problem. Getting that dream. Thank you for opening up your story. Best of no luck. Problem. I hope this all takes off. No problem, man. I appreciate you for allowing me to be on your um, platform. And I just.